Are you an adult and you've recently had a diagnosis of autism or Asperger's? What do you do next? You've just had your diagnosis and you finally know the truth. You're not a child anymore. You're independent. You have a life, maybe a career and a family. You might even be retired and you've just gained the knowledge that you are on the autistic spectrum. Don't panic, as the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy told us in large, friendly letters on its cover. It's good news that will have a positive impact on your life there's a good chance that your diagnosis has come following that of your child or grandchild, which can instantly create a closer bond. You're probably already feeling that this explains so much about your life. You may be remembering those times in school when you made a fool of yourself, those job interviews you messed up, or those people who just treated you differently without any reason you could fathom. The positives you could never explain, what we on this channel call autistomatic qualities might make more sense too. Perhaps heightened senses, excellent memory or problem-solving abilities that seem a little keener than you see in others. Welcome to our world. It's a rich and varied world as you will discover, but not without its problems. There are some things you need to consider from here on. Now you have been told that you are on the autistic spectrum, what do you do now? Do you tell people about this revelation or not? If so, who should you tell? What will happen if you keep it to yourself? If you tell your boss, your family or your partner that you are autistic, will they take it as a reasonable explanation of your differences and accept it as explanation without harming your relationships? Experiences of coming out of the autistic closet vary. In some cases, the people you tell already truly value you. They will absorb the news without preconceptions as a context to the aspects of your personality they didn't fully comprehend before. Before you reveal your diagnosis to the people who matter in your life, consider both sides of how it may change their perception of you. If you're lucky, your family and your closest friends will welcome your new status as nothing more than confirmation of your distinctiveness. They knew that there was something that separated you from the rest, but they didn't have the words for it before. You're still the same person they've known for years, but now they have a clear frame of reference to know how to support you. Your relationships will grow and flourish in a way they couldn't before. Family is probably the only area of our lives that is non-negotiable for most of us. The price you would pay for not telling your parents, siblings or children is too high for many to contemplate. They have to be the ones to know first, and it can serve as a guide for how to go about it with other people later. In most cases, your family are the most likely to accept and adapt to the knowledge. They may not, or they may have a hard time of it, but they will usually get there. If you are lucky enough to be in a close relationship or married, they can also reasonably expect that your partner will embrace the news and be as happy as you that you have answered the biggest question of your life. Why am I different? In most cases, that is exactly what will happen. And it's not a secret that should be kept between two people sharing their lives so closely. If the news changes your relationship for the worse, then it does raise the question of whether the relationship was built on solid foundations. The same applies to friends. Many people on the spectrum, even if they don't yet know they are, don't have extensive real-world social networks. Rather than a loose association of people they have something in common with, they're more likely to have a very small group of friends that they know very well. Maybe even just one or two best friends. Some don't bother with friends at all, but the outcome is much the same as with a partner or spouse. A friend who thinks less of you or treats you less favourably after diagnosis was likely not the friend you thought they were. So how about your employer, if you have one? If they are compassionate, forward-thinking and are aware of their moral and or legal responsibilities, they will treat you well and your diagnosis will only enhance your working relationship. They will immediately look for more information and put steps in place, if they don't already have them, to ensure that you are treated appropriately. 
that will ensure that your managers and your colleagues, if you choose to tell them, are fully briefed that you might react differently in some situations and to listen to you when you tell them you don't understand something. Triggers which might once have sent you into a meltdown will be minimised. You'll be kept better informed and surprises which throw you off your game will be kept to a minimum. If you're less lucky, it could become the stick that some used to beat you with. The same people who used to call you quirky or eccentric are now using words like handicapped or disadvantaged. Your quirks become problems and your eccentricities become barriers. They may interpret your needs as a demand for special treatment and may even be less supportive of you than when they thought of you just as a distinctive person. This is more than just frustrating. It can be devastating when it's your employer's attitude that changes for the worse. Your livelihood and your future could be overturned on the basis of your diagnosis, despite all the moral and legal protections you should be able to rely on. The legal protections offered by legislation such as the Equality Act of 2010 in the UK are not as easy to enforce as they should be, even in the case of a highly visible disability, let alone an invisible one such as autism. Before you reveal your diagnosis to the people who matter in your life, consider both sides of how it may change their perception of you. We don't want to paint a bleak picture of your future, but these are scenarios you need to consider before you make your diagnosis public. It is human nature to fear the unknown, but nothing focuses that fear like a label. You could be a useful eccentric or a disabled liability depending on the preconceptions, intelligence and compassion of who you tell. We started this video saying that your diagnosis is good news, and we stand by that. Knowing why you are different can be tremendously liberating. It can lift layers of uncertainty and anxiety which have built up over years, even decades. You understand that you are not alone for the first time in your life. It can boost your confidence. It can allow you to seek advice from others on the spectrum and in some countries can open doors to assistance or funding to make your life easier. Just stop to think before you open up to people. Use the caution you've learned over the years. Exercise your ability to analyse situations. Heed the advice of those who care about you if you're lucky enough to have them. Be sure that you tell the people that need to know and do it as positively and constructively as possible. As much as you are able, look out for signs that the tables may be turning against you so you can react to it in time. There are too many simplifications applied to our differences which are described as symptoms of autism and Asperger's, many of which can be unhelpful to us. We can all relate to many of these differences, but in varying degrees. One of the most frequently used against us is that we are resistant to change. Almost all of us have made monumentous efforts to overcome our communication difficulties and have learned to fit in in some way. We have spent sleepless nights rerunning past mistakes or rehearsing the conversations of the following day. But there is a limit to how far we can push ourselves. When we reach that threshold, the people around us can either learn to work with us and benefit from our friendship, our loyalty and our hard work, or they can reject us. If they choose the latter, it says far more about their resistance to change than it does ours. Opening up to the world is a personal decision. Each one of us must weigh up the pros and cons of our individual situations carefully before deciding what will be best for us and those we hold dear. If you choose to remain private, there are communities of us online and supportive organisations to help you understand your diagnosis and put you in touch with more people like you. I have chosen to present these videos after decades in the shadows because I hope I can help to make a difference by putting a face to my words, to be more relatable. Getting the message out that we can offer so much to the world in return for a little tolerance and understanding is, I believe, the best way to nudge society towards being a friendlier place for people with Asperger's and autism. It is a calculated risk and not one that everyone will want to take. However you choose to go about sharing your knowledge of your autism,
We hope it is or was a successful and positive experience. The better our relationships with people, the greater our potential to use our strengths, to be autistomatic instead of just autistic. It's important to keep in mind that there are millions of people with autism on this planet, growing stronger and helping each other by sharing. Tell us in the comments about your experiences following your diagnosis. How did it make you feel? How did people around you react? Have you just been diagnosed or are awaiting diagnosis and wondering what to do next? Above all, remember, you're not just autistic, because every day can be an autistomatic day. Please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell to be kept up to date with new content.